All right, hey everybody, welcome to Zenfolio Live. I am Robert with Zenfolio Customer Support, and I want to say thank you for joining us here on the live Q&A today. Now, before I get started jumping into questions, I do have some stuff I want to go over. As you can tell by the title, today I want to talk about using visitor sign-in and triggered emails to, audio, uh, to, to automate the engagement of your website visitors. Now, before I get right into that, if this is your first time watching us today uh, on la the live stream, make sure to click the little orange Zenfolio icon and subscribe to the channel. We put out video tutorials every week. Um, there's new tutorials that come out uh, this week. I've got one coming out on restricted events. Last week was a overview of the new shopping experience, um, and it also what it also had was I uh, had some client buying tutorials in that video as well. So definitely make sure that you are subscribed to the channel because, like I said, there's lots of good things that come out. There's the weekly tutorials and then the weekly live stream as well. All right, so now let's jump into the topic that I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is engaging the visitors on your website automatically or automating that engagement. <clears throat> so what I mean by that is if you've got a, a gallery called uh, like, a, like a portfolio gallery or something on your site where people can freely go and check out your work, what you can do is you can set up that portfolio gallery or any gallery really to have what's called visitor sign-in. So for instance, right here, I've got this portfolio group right here that's called, that's just portfolio. And uh, what I wanna do is I wanna turn on this feature called visitor sign-in, because what it does is before anybody can view the photos inside of it, it just asks them for their name and their email address. And you can make this a required field, you can make this optional, you can change uh, some of the things and the way it's set up. So let me just show you how to do that. So what we're gonna do is just click on that group right there and then what we're going to do is go over to visitor sign in right here and right now you can see it says none now what we want to do is we want to turn visitor sign in on so what we're going to do is turn visitor sign in on right here we're going to go down here and we're going to change this to display a visitor sign in page before allowing access to the gallery and then also the other two things that you want to have set up here or at least at least one thing that you want to have set up is to automatically update your contact list what that's going to do is anytime somebody goes through the visitor sign in process and they uh, give you their name and their email address it's going to add that information to your contact list so you want to make sure that's checked you can probably get away with unchecking this send an email if you don't want to get an email every time somebody signs into a gallery you could probably uncheck that and get away with that. Um, so next what we're going to do is we're going to go right here to visitor messaging and you can put a page heading uh, and a message to the vi visitors here if you want. If you want to change it, um, you know, you can say something like I promise I won't spam you. Whatever you want to say to your visitors, you can put that information here. Let me just get myself out of the way here. And then next we're going to go down to the sign in fields. So if we click right here. These are going to be the fields that are shown and you can set some of these to be required or not required for people to enter. So like I said, the whole purpose of this is to try to gather email addresses. So you can make it required or make it not required. It's up to you. For this one example, I'm just going to leave it set to require, require that and click save. So now I'm going to save that. So now what's going to happen is anytime that somebody goes to my portfolio group right here so if, if I uh, copy this link really quick let's say I have a link to that portfolio group in my um, in my uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry so let's say I have a link to that portfolio group on my uh, site menu anytime somebody goes to that they're gonna get a message that pops up and says um, please sign in to view the gallery so let me see if I can get that and show that to you really quick here So right here is the gallery being visited. 
uh, on another tab and here you can see right here it says please register to view the photos so this is the what the the, the clients are going to see when they click that uh, before they'll be able to view the photos so if they put their name and their email and hit continue then after that they'll be able to come in and see the different portfolio galleries now once they do that that information goes to your contact list right here so if I go to communication and contact list you're gonna see right here these are all the different emails that people have signed in through visitor sign in so Zenfolio is gonna collect that information for you so you have it there you can send them out emails if you want but now let's go to the second part of this topic, which is automating, automating the engagement of those site visitors. So what's happened is, is we've had somebody go and check out our public portfolio gallery. How can we automatically re-engage them and just to kind of, you know, maybe get a, uh, maybe get a job from that engagement? What you can do is set up what's called triggered email. So if you go to communications right here, what you're going to want to do is go to email communications then there's actually a tab called triggered emails <clears throat> but before we go to that what we're going to do is we're going to talk about these email templates right here so what I've done is I've created an email template right down here and I've called this one visitor sign in template right here I created that and basically this is what it says it just says hey thanks for taking the time to check out my photos I hope you enjoyed them if you have a special event coming up sometime soon I would love to sit down and have coffee with you and discuss your event here's my number uh, hope to chat with you soon cheers so basically it's just a you know an email just trying to get somebody to, to to make contact with me and maybe talk about an upcoming wedding an upcoming you know graduation or something that they might uh, be interested in um, using my services for and that's just an email template that we've set up so here's what we want to do we want to go back up to triggered emails right here and now what we want to make happen is anytime somebody goes through that visitor sign-in process on our website we want to automatically send them that email so these are going to be people that are checking out your portfolio galleries or any other gallery that you have uh, any other gallery that you have that visitor sign-in turned on Anytime they go through and do that visitor sign in, you can have it set up to automatically send them that email. Um, and it's really good for like things like weddings and stuff as well. But so what we're going to do is right here, there is visitor sign in gallery and visitor sign in group. So since we set that visitor sign in up on the group, we probably want to turn this one on, but you can also turn it on for a gallery as well. And what we're going to do is just click edit right here. And I'm going to select the email template that I want to use. So I'm going right here and choosing that visitor sign in template. And then, you know, I don't want to automatically email that to the visitor right after they do the visitor sign in because that kind of seems a little spammy to me. Um, I, I don't like it when I go and visit websites and as soon as I enter my information, 10 minutes later, I've got an email and then. 20 minutes later I'm getting another one I don't, I don't like to be spammed and we don't want our visitors to think that we're spamming them so what I like to do is I like to start off with maybe like three days right here so three days after that person did that visitor sign in they're gonna get that email template that just says hey thanks for checking out the photos you know if you've got an event coming up let's sit down and talk kind of thing and then you can just save and enable that so anytime somebody goes through the visitor sign in process they're gonna get that email in three days now the cool thing is is you could make a couple more templates um, and you could actually add more to this so you can say okay well maybe uh, after you know 30 days Maybe I just want to send them automatically send them another email that just says, hey, um, you checked out some of my photos. I was just wanting to check in and see if there was anything you need or anything I could do uh, for you. Um, anything that I could do for you, um, you know, if, if you had any work or any, you know, any kind of pho photographic needs that I can serve for you. You could do that as well. Set it up for 30 days after and just choose an email right here. And then you would just save and enable. Now I don't have a template set up here so unfortunately I can't set that one up so we're just going to trash that one and just leave this first one set up here and then enable it and that is how you set that up.
All right, so let me go back to my dashboard really quick, and it looks like Katrina is actually asking a great question in the chat. She says, would that discourage people from visiting if they have to enter their info, info to look just at my portfolio? You can make it optional. You can leave it off. Uh, it just depends. Um, I think that it... <laughs> You know, it, it depends. There's 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 two different sides of that. You know, one, it could be discouraging. Two, it could just discourage the people who just are kind of wanting to glance at your work but are not really interested. Um, so I can definitely see two sides to that there. One, it kind of being discouraging. One of the things that you might do too, Katrina, is if you don't want to have it on your portfolio, but let's say that you're shooting a lot of weddings where, you know, people other than just the client are visiting those galleries. So maybe you shoot a wedding and uh, your uh, bride and groom want to share that gallery out with maybe all the guests so they can go through and visit photos or, and look at photos. That's one thing you could do is you could turn visitor sign in on there and then you would be collecting the emails of all of the people from that wedding who visited your uh, website and then that might be another way that you could automatically engage those people and not use it on a public portfolio but have it set up to be a requirement before somebody views an actual client gallery. So definitely a good question and a good point to bring up, uh, Katrina. I think it just kind of depends on who you're looking for. And, um, you know, if you think that it will be discouraging, I would definitely not use it. Um, if you're just trying to uh, collect emails and you want to kind of filter out people who might just be kind of passing through and glancing at stuff and not really interested, it might be a good way to do that as well. But it's definitely something that you guys should try out. The triggered emails are amazing. They will definitely help you automate things um, and definitely a good way to start marketing yourself without doing much extra work. All right, um, so back to my dashboard here really quick. All right, guys, so if you're watching this live and you've got any questions about your Zenfolio account, if you want to know how to set up a price list about organization, anything at all, please go ahead and get that in the chat so I can make sure to get those answered. Um, other than, right now, I'm going to start taking some questions from my email. So if you guys are watching this right now, if you look in the description of the video, there's actually two links there. Um, and those are for people who watch the recorded versions of this live stream and it lets them ask questions for the next week and so that's where most of my email questions and stuff come from um, so if you're watching the recorded version of this definitely use those links to get questions in and I'll answer them next week um, let me say hi to Graham hey Graham glad to have you back Graham is always here hanging out with us and it's always a good thing to have him still looking into that tutorial for you Graham um, so definitely keep your eye out for that I'm not sure when but it's definitely something that I'm looking in, into creating. All right, uh, so my next question here is from Sandra in Texas. She says, can we have a designated email export button, Photoshop, and then in parentheses it says Photoshop elements, the same as Apple computers do? So I'm going to have to just be honest, Sandra. I'm not really sure exactly what you're asking uh, for that. If you're asking about something that has to do with Photoshop elements, I would definitely recommend contacting Adobe on that. Uh, but if you could just clarify that a little bit more on exactly what you're asking for as it relates to your Zenfolio account, then I'd definitely be happy to help you with that. And you can also feel free to uh, just shoot us an email too. Just go to Zenfolio.com forward slash contact and you can shoot us an email that way with more details on that. All right, um, so Katrina asks, uh, is there a limit to the number of photos that I can put in a gallery? Absolutely not. So there's not a limit to how many photos you can have in a gallery. Um, you can have as many as you want. Now, with that being said, um, <clears throat> you might want to um, you might want to be considerate of how far down your clients or people that are viewing that gallery are going to be willing to scroll. Uh, I know myself personally, if I come across a gallery that's just full of images um, and, and things like that, then and I keep scrolling and it just seems like it's going on forever and ever and ever and ever, eventually I'm going to get bored. Uh, and uh, and I, I would like to think that I have a little bit of a longer attention span than most people, but if you ask my wife, she would probably definitely disagree with that state statement. But um, that's the one thing that you would want to consider, Katrina, when you're talking about how many photos should I put in the gallery. Um, how far down do you think your visitors are going to be willing to scroll before they kind of get bored and leave? Uh, and that would be where I'd kind of set that limit. 
Probably what I would suggest doing is maybe creating a group for a client. And then if they're, if you know that client's going to have a bunch of images, you could create a group. So if I go in here, for instance, you could have a group for the client. Let me just find. Uh, so if you had a group like this, then you could just have multiple galleries where those um, images are split up into different galleries so that, um, you know, maybe like one if you're especially if you're doing a wedding, maybe you've got one where it's all the ceremony photos in one gallery, maybe the reception photos, maybe the um, the formal photos are in another gallery. That's going to be easier for your clients to navigate. And I would much rather navigate through galleries like that than just continuously scrolling through tons and tons of photos. So that would be my personal suggestion. Again, there is no imposed limit from Zenfolio on how many photos you can actually put inside of a gallery. But uh, the thing you want to consider is just you know how, how long are your clients going to be willing to scroll down through those photos. Uh, but definitely a good question, Katrina. Thanks for asking there. All right, let me see here what other questions I've got here. All right, so my next question says, uh, if I want if I want to have people comment on my images in the portfolio, how do I do that? Is that different from the guest book? So when it comes to uh, commenting on an actual photo, there's something called photo comments. And what I'm going to show you guys how to do is I'm going to show you how to turn on photo comments on the Quick Shop page because this month is the month that Zenfolio rolls over to the new shopping experience and the old shopping experience is no longer going to be available. So if you guys have not turned on that new shopping experience yet, please make sure to do that. Just come up to the top and click here, turn it on. That way you've got time to learn how to use it, get used to it, um, let your clients get used to it. And um, last week I did do a video tutorial on that. And let me just throw that link out in the chat. Uh, so this is the new shopping experience overview uh, tutorial right here. Um, and also at the end of it, it's got links to where you can get client buying tutorials as well. So it's definitely a great resource to help prepare you for when that new shopping experience becomes the shopping experience. All right. But back onto the question about photo comments. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go to a gallery really quick and we're just going to edit that gallery. So I'm just going to hop in the Smith gallery right here. And then anytime you want to access a specific gallery and customize view, what you want to do is click on that gallery right here on the left, hover over preview and click customize. And that's going to load just that gallery right into customize view and then we're, I'm going to show you how to turn on photo comments so let me zoom out a little bit here in my browser so we can see everything so if we click on a photo right here if we're wanting to allow clients to comment on the photo and things like that then what we want to do is we want to turn on the photo comments button so this is the quick shot page and right now you can see it's got nothing up here up top no um, download button, no comments or anything like that. Uh, well, so what we need to do is we need to set those to show. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to options right here and then go down here to the bottom and just set that comments button to show. There's also sharing, download, back button, all that good stuff you can set to show. But right now we're just after that photos comment button. So let me get myself out of the way there. So after we turn that on, we're just going to hit apply. And that is going to put that photo comment uh, button right above the image in the gallery. So now you can see right here is that photo comments button. So if I was a client and I was viewing this page, I would just click this right here and I could write a comment on this right here. So I could just say add comment and I could say, hey, I like this one. Or if I could spell, I could say that anyway. You know, or this is also a good way too if, if your client is going to be the only person viewing this gallery and they're not going to have friends and family and stuff like that. If they want to uh, maybe put some edit requests like, uh, hey, could I get this in a vertical crop? That's a good way that they could do that as well. And then they could just add that comment and um, they can make it a public comment. They can let it be a private comment. Um, they can suggest different cropping right here. So if they wanted to do like this and suggest this edit right here like this, they can even do that. Uh, if there was just something they didn't like in the photo, like uh, maybe they want to try to see if we can't remove these little spots right here that are kind of distracting. You know, they could also do like this right here, like 
you know, can we remove these spots like that? So there's all kinds of different things they can do with the photo comment and then they would just click add comment right here. And it's actually going to, if it's a public comment or depending on how the gallery is set up, um, it'll either add it or ask you to moderate it first and make sure that it's okay to publicly add it. But that's how that comment button can be added. So again, that's just in uh, Quick Shop. You go to customize view, make sure that you're in gallery Quick Shop up here in the top left. Go to options and then just set that comments button to show right here and then apply it. And then of course, as always, if you want that those settings to apply to all of your galleries, you just click that save as default button right there and then as long as your galleries are using the default settings, that is going to apply to all of your galleries and make them all look the same. Which I'm a big fan of uniformity. I think it makes it easier. One for me, the photographer, to kind of know how things look and how things work. But once your clients get used to you, the gallery is looking a certain way and working a certain way, I think it's nice to leave that and have consistency, consistency as much as you can throughout your entire website. All right, let me get back to my dashboard here really quick and take another question from my email. All right, so um, my next question says, I have some contact forms in PDF version that I want to display on my site. Do you offer an option to upload these so the client can download them? Also, is there a way to add a P add them to my site so anyone can access them? Yes, absolutely. So what you can do is you can add uh, the PDF to, you can just upload it. So if you go I think it's under website right here. If you hover over website, there's actually a PDF section right here that you can click on. So you can click website and then PDFs. And then as you can see, I've already got one that I've uploaded up here, but if you've got a new one that you're wanting to upload, you just click add new. And then you can even customize the URL here and then you would just upload that file right here. But I've got one right here and uh, there's the URL right here. So now if I go to my website and customize view, so I'm just gonna hover over my Zenfolio and go to customize website. Let's say maybe that was a PDF on, um, you know, what to wear during your session, or maybe it was just a general client's uh, question and answer PDF. And I wanted to make it publicly available to anybody who accessed my site. Well, I could do that just by making a link to it on the site menu here. So if I go right here, and let's say it's a client's, you know, FAQ. We can do that right there, hit enter. And then on the menu item right here, you can just go PDF document, and it actually is in this drop down list right here. And then update. And then once this refreshes, you can see right here will be that link to that client's FAQ. And if I click it, it would go right to that PDF document here, which you see, which is definitely not a FAQ for clients. But anyway, that's how you can do that there. Um, it's just linked to it from your site menu. All right, let me get back to my dashboard. And Katrina has another question. She says, when uploading pics for a blog, is there a way to do it without having to bring pics into Zenfolio first? I find myself creating fake client galleries just to upload the pics. So it sounds like you might want to be using uh, an image maybe that's uh, hosted elsewhere, Katrina. I'm not sure exactly. So there's there's a couple of different options here that you could do. Um, and if you're trying to avoid uploading them to Zenfolio first, um, if you have them uploaded somewhere else, then what you can do is just link directly to them in the blog post. So if I go to website really quick and blog, and then let me just go to a test blog post here. There, you can click photo right here and insert a photo in here. So I can insert a photo. And then what you can do is you can say photo or video. And what you can do is just choose this option right here to use an image located elsewhere on the web. Enter the link right here. So if I went over to Google and I just did a quick search of like, um, let me think, a quick search of uh, cameras. And then I did images right here. And let me get this right here. So if I 
copy that image address. Whoops. Let me go back here. If I just go to view the image and I copy this image address up in the top, you guys can't see it, but I'm copying the link to the image. I can go back to the blog post right here and then paste that in and say add image and now it's going to link to that there and then I can hit insert and now it's going to insert that photo based on that link. So if you're not actually wanting to upload it uh, into your Zenfolio account, you've got it somewhere else, um, then that's a way to do it. Unfortunately, if you're just wanting to be able to upload it directly into the blog post without having to upload it to a gallery first in Zenfolio, there's not really a way to upload it directly from the uh, the blog post creations uh, place. What I typically do, Katrina, for stuff like that is I will just have a gallery um, rather than creating a bunch of fake galleries and things like that. What I usually do is I have a gallery. So if you go into my account right here, let me just switch this over. If you go here, I've actually got a folder right here called Web Assets. And inside of there, what I do is, um, I don't think I have one on this one, but usually what I'll do is I'll just create a single gallery inside of a group like this, specifically for blog photos um, to upload in. So I'll just go right here, say New Gallery. And then uh, that created that new gallery right here. And then I would just call this Blog Photos. And then what you'll probably want to do is you'll probably want to set that gallery, leave it public, but you can come and you can set it down here to not be indexed by search engines. And then you can also have it not show in the recently added section. So again, what I've done is I've created just a, a new gallery. I've set it on the gallery access. I've left it public, but I've set it not to show up and be indexed by search engines right here. Um, and then what I usually do is just any photos that I want to use on my blog, I'll just upload uh, to that gallery right there, that blog photo, uh, photos gallery. And then when I'm creating the blog post, I'll just pull the photos from that gallery uh, into the blog post. That way you don't have to create a bunch of different galleries. You don't have to worry about making sure that you're setting everything up right because you've already got that gallery set up and you can just upload those photos that you want to use in there really quick and use it on all your blog posts. So that's what I would recommend uh, doing that, Katrina. All right, um, so let me get back to my dashboard here really quick. And then Andrew says, how can I use my blog to capture email addresses of the blog reader? Um, I don't think that there is a way to turn on visitor sign in on the blog post. But one thing that you are able to do is if you go to the blog, and that's a great question, Andrew. I'm glad you asked that. If you go to the blog, one thing that you are able to do is you are able to put custom code in the blog post. So when I say custom code, what I mean is, let's say you've got a MailChimp account and you've got, uh, you, you're you trying to get people to subscribe to uh, an email list or something like that. Well, you, using MailChimp, you can actually get them to generate you an embed code that can, they can use, that you can use to have like a pop-up where it says, you know, give me your email address and subscribe to my, uh, you know, newsletter or something like that. Well, on the blog post, you can actually click source right here. And you can actually go and paste that embed code wherever you want here on that blog post. So you can paste it, you know, below stuff, you know, wherever you want. So if you want to, maybe you want to have it pop up here above this photo, you could just go right here, click source, and um, leave a little bit of space and paste in that custom embed code there. You can also do the embed option right here and paste that embed code right here as well. Um, but sometimes using that embed option makes things pop up a little funny, especially videos. So that's why I usually uh, go the source code route, Andrew. Now, one of the things I do want to point out is anytime you guys use this like source code feature where you're embedding third-party codes, um, we are not able to actually offer any technical support for those third-party embedded codes. So anytime you're going and clicking source code or using that embed option and embedding third-party code, uh, or any kind of custom code for that matter, unfortunately, we're not able to offer you any technical support on if the code's working or what it's doing. But that's definitely an option there that you can use, Andrew, if you're wanting to try to get people to like sign up for an email list or something like that. 
All right, let me get back to my dashboard here really quick and take another question from my email here. Um, okay, so I've got a question that says, my clients keep getting messages about stuff still being in their cart. <laughs> what is this from? So Zenfolio offers industry standard best practices when it comes to things like shopping cart reminders and things like that. And what this is, is that if you've got a gallery that has any kind of price list assigned to it, and let's say a client goes in there and they're thinking about buying some photos and they even go through the process of adding them to their shopping cart, but they don't quite check out yet. What happens is our system will send them, I think it's up to three, let me see if I can get my hand in the shot. Three, three emails just reminding them that they've got some stuff in their cart and if they want to check out. Uh, and this is a setting that you can turn on and off. If you go to a settings right here and you go to selling, then over in the bottom right here it says shopping cart reminders. And this is actually a setting that you can turn on or turn off. And yeah, so it's three emails right here. And so again, this is when people have gone to a gallery that had a price list assigned to it and they've actually added something to their shopping cart but they haven't completed the checkout process yet. Um, and I think it maybe it takes like a day or two and then we'll send that first email and then, uh, you know, I think it may be a couple of days later and we'll send them another one. Just reminding them that they have something in their cart if they want to check out. Uh, but you can definitely turn it off if that's something that you want to turn off there. All right, let me uh, jump over here to my next email question here. <clears throat> so uh, my next question says, can I add some additional questions and fields to the built-in contact page? So if you guys didn't know, the Zenfolio website comes with a built-in contact page. Usually when you very first create your website for the first time, I think it's on there by default. But let me show you where that page is and what options you do have for, um, for customizing the built-in page. And then we can talk about using a custom page to create a custom contact uh, page. So if you go to website right here and you click on built-in pages, My cup's blue today. Um, so if you click on built-in pages and then you scroll down, this is the built-in Zenfolio uh, contact page here. Right here is the con right here. That's the URL. And what you want to do is click on customize, and that's going to open up that page into customize view. Now there are some options here that you have. The options on the built-in page are pretty limited. You can go up to options right here and you can say contact fields and you can require a name email address you can require a phone number and then you've got three additional questions that you can ask and you can make them uh, required or optional so if you want to say you know um, how did you hear about us you could add something like that and then if I save that if I apply that that's going to add that field to the built-in contact page. So you're going to see that extra question pop up on this page right here. So how did you hear about us right here? And it, it's indicating that it's optional. So that's how you can add some additional fields or questions to the built-in contact page if you want. Um, like I said, it is pretty limited. So what I would normally suggest to people who are really wanting to customize their contact page is do it with a uh, with a custom page. So if I go back to my dashboard really quick, let me just go back to the dashboard. Um, custom pages are right here. If you go to website and custom pages, and what a custom page is going to do is it's going to let you um, access and and put code into the source code. So um, if I go right here, it almost looks just like creating a blog post. But the cool thing is, is you can click the source code and you can paste in embedded code. So what I tell people to do is use a service like JotForm or something like that and you can actually create a custom contact page that way. In fact, there's an example. Let me just open up a new tab really quick and I'll show you. If you ever want to see some examples of uh, things that you can do on Zenfolio, you can just check out the whitegoldphotography.com page. That's a Zenfolio demo page. I just sent that link out in the chat there. But if you go right here under custom pages and we go to contact us right here, 
this is kind of something that's possible with a with a custom page. So if I scroll down, now you can see here this is a lot different looking than that built-in custom page, and this will, or that built-in contact page, and this was built in JotForm. So basically, you just go create this form on JotForm, and then you get the embed code and embed it onto your custom page, and then you would just add that as a link onto your site menu in your Zenfolio account. So let me give you the specific link to this page too because it's got some help articles on it and uh, some different pages that you can go to uh, where you can get embedding code and things like that. So let me just throw that link out here in the chat as well. All right, let me get back to my dashboard here really quick. So let me just close this out and go back to my dashboard. <clears throat> oh yeah, and as Cheryl was saying too, JotForm also has contracts with online signature options and things like that. Um, you can also use custom pages to do like calendar-based booking. There's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do with custom pages. But again, I just want to caution you guys that anytime you use those custom code, as much as we would love to be able to help you with them, unfortunately, we're not able to offer any technical support on if the code's working or why it's not working and things like that. But if you know a little bit about coding or you're just brave enough to try, it's definitely a cool option to check out and see what all you can accomplish. All right, let me go back to my chat here really quick. It looks like Katrina had a question. So she says, so back to the PDF, can we add those PDF or contract or contact me forms to the bottom of each portfolio? I want wedding clients to complete a contract form right from the portfolio gallery. So what you could do is if you're wanting a form to pop up into a, a portfolio gallery, Probably what I would consider is one of the following two options. If you have a generic form that you could probably use for most of your contracts and most of your portfolio galleries, Katrina, what I would suggest doing is putting that in my footer and then setting the footer to show on uh, setting the footer to show on those portfolio pages. You could even actually make it a link to the contract. It doesn't have to be a pop-up. You could make it a link. Uh, so what you would do is just go to um, Customize Zenfolio really quick right here. And then you would just customize your footer to either include that code or include that link. So let me show you really quick. Uh, what we're going to do is go to the footer right here. And then you would just go to Layout First. And you want to make sure that this custom content is showing right here because that's what's going to give you this content tab. So if I hide that, that content tab goes away. And we're just going to click custom content show and that's going to give us that tab, which we can then click there. And then that gives us access to that source button. And this is where you could either put a link to that contract form that you want brides to sign and fill out on the portfolio page. Or this is where you could embed the code um, for that contact form if you want it to kind of pop up in the portfolio. Um, just right here on the footer and go to source. And then once you save that, so let me get myself out of the way again. Once you save that, let me just show you what this does. Now any page that you set the footer to show in, that form or whatever you embedded in there will be on that page. So if I, let's say I go to my weddings portfolio really quick right here. And let's say that's where I want that form to pop up. Uh, so what I would do is I would just go to options right here and then under page elements I would set that footer to show and then apply it and then now if I scroll down to the bottom here's that footer and this would be you know whatever you coded in there whether it's a link to a contract or whether it's some kind of embedded you know uh, job form pop-up or something like that it would show up on the bottom of that uh, gallery down there now the other option to Katrina that you could do is you could if you want something a little more controlled what you might consider doing is creating portfolio galleries and custom pages so that you could um, put that form up uh, on those custom pages a little bit more prevalent. So what you could do is you could go to website, custom pages, and then just, you know, go to new and say, you know, wedding portfolio, and then just add some images 
Or, you know, if you just want your portfolio to be a slideshow, you can just embed a slideshow right here. But basically make this page out to be somewhat of a, a portfolio gallery. And then after below the images, then you could have that form embedded there as well. You know, and that way it wouldn't have to be all the way down at the bottom. It could be just right under the images. Um, I wish I had um, a way to I could just actually fully show you that example, but I don't have any form codes handy or I would but so those are the two options Katrina that I would really consider it just kind of depends on how you want it to look and what's important to you um, but either doing it through the footer or doing it on a custom page or linking to it from the footer is an option as well all right let me get back to the dashboard I'm just gonna not save this one here and let me jump into the chat question here. So anyway, Katrina, I hope that helped you out. Uh, if you have some more questions, definitely please keep asking in the chat. I'd love to help you out. Um, Andrew says, what other examples of automated engagement is there other than visitor sign-in? So um, there are tons, there's, there's several different things that you can do to automatically engage your clients. All of it is gonna revolve around triggered emails. So if I go to communications right here, there's several different actions that people can take on your website that will trigger emails. So if I go to email communications over on the left here, and then we go to triggered emails, there's visitor sign-in through a gallery, visitor sign-in through a group, through a collection, uh, through a event, but then there's also all of these other ones right here So you can create an automated email to be sent when people create an account so if um, for instance anytime people try to save or, or clients try to save favorites on your site they're actually now they have to re they have to create a client account and so you can have triggered emails set up to send to them when they create that client account and like said like I showed earlier you can have up to three different emails be scheduled to send out to them and I think you can even separate them out as far as a year apart if you want to do that as well but you can do that for account creation favorites created favorites that shared when they place an order or you know if you're using the built-in contact page and maybe you want to send an email reply right away when somebody sends you a uh, you know a, an email just letting them know you know that you appreciate them contacting you and you'll be in touch with them as soon as possible or something like that this right here is another way that you can do that as well through the triggered emails so there's several different options for automating the engagement um, using the triggered emails you just kind of have to go through and set them up and then of course you're gonna have to make sure that you have email templates set up for those triggered emails as well all right let me get back to my dashboard and I hope that answers your question Andrew um, if you have any more questions definitely please feel free to let me know and I'm happy to answer them here um, we do have about 20 more minutes left guys so if you're watching and you haven't asked a question yet please definitely make sure to get that in, into the chat so I can get those answered live and then again if you're watching the recorded version of this I really appreciate everybody who watches the recorded version too um, and definitely use the links in the video description below so you guys can keep sending me those questions and I can answer them for you and you can watch them the next following week alright so let me take another email question here uh, so let's see this question says I shoot a few weddings a month and there's just about always a second shooter is there a way for the second shooter to upload their images into a gallery too so it sounds like you want a way to allow somebody else to access your Zenfolio account and upload their photos so that you don't have to um, if this is a second shooter that you work with a lot and you and you trust you can definitely do that as long as you have an advanced account the advanced accounts and the premium business accounts come with an option to add other users to where you can have separate separate let me try to say that separate logins for other users so let me show you where that's at if I go up here to settings right here and I go to account I think it's under account yep it's under account we're gonna go down here and click manage users right here and this is where you can create other user accounts to log into your Zenfolio account so let's say for instance that I want to create one for um, Zach uh, what I'm gonna do is go to create new right here and I'm just gonna put his full name Zach uh, or I'll put his name here put his email address in here so Zach at test.com 
And then I'll also give him a, uh, a username as well. So this will be his unique username. So you could just put like Zach rocks, Zach, whatever, whatever the username you want for that person to be. That's where you're going to put it there. And then next you're going to choose the role that they have. So this is a guy you're going to limit what parts of the account they have access to. But now with that being said, any of these, um, any of these accounts are going to have full access to all of the photos in the account. So they'll be able to view all of the photos in the account, no matter who uploaded them. Um, so they're going to be able to view all those. But what I'm going to do is set up Zach as a second shooter. So we can say photographer or contributing photographer. It depends on what you, what you want to set it up to be. But you can kind of read through here what it lets people do. So the partner will have full access to everything in your Zenfolio account, except they will not be able to change the personal profile information, and they also will not be able to change your subscription level. So they won't be able to downgrade the account or upgrade the account or cancel the account or anything like that. And then the assistant, uh, the assistant has, you know, obviously a little less access. And the photographers, basically all they can do is they can access and upload photos. They won't have access to be able to change a price list. They won't be able to customize the photos. And they won't be able to change ownership of the photos and things like that. Now, um, after that, basically what happens is you just choose the role that you want for that second photographer. I would probably consider either contributing photographer or photographer and then you hit continue and what it's going to do is it's actually going to send an email out to them and have them create their password and all of that uh, stuff themselves and then you can also set up which galleries and things that they're going to own now they'll still be able to access all of the galleries in the account this is just going to identify who owns what galleries and then after Zach gets that email creates his account then he would be able to then log into the Zenfolio account and upload the photos as he was a second shooter. So anyway, that's how you would set that up and allow a second shooter to access um, and limit what they're able to do. Again, you probably just want to make sure that it is somebody that you you know work with quite often. I wouldn't do this for just like a second shooter that you hired off of Craigslist unless it was somebody that you knew really well. Um, so you definitely want to be careful with who you're giving access to to your Zenfolio account. All right, um, let me jump into another email question here really quick. Guys, we've got about 10 more minutes left, so if you're watching and you've got questions, make sure to throw those out. Um, I'm just going to keep hammering away at these email questions. Uh, it looks like Graham liked that second shooter question, so I'm glad I was able to answer that as well. Um, okay, Thomas wants to know how people from different countries can buy his artwork. Will the right currency automatically show for the customer? So if you want to set up and you want to sell globally, meaning you want to sell for, you know, for like, like if you're a fine art photographer, obviously you want as many different people possible to be able to buy your, um, to be able to buy your, your artwork. You know, you don't want it to be just limited to certain countries. Well, what you have to do, first of all, is you have to make sure that you create a price list with multiple currencies added to it. So if we go up to selling right here, what we're going to do is we're just going to create a, a price list really quick. So let's see. Um, I'm just going to use this main price list right here. And I'm not going to go through the process of adding all the currencies that we offer. I'm just going to add one more to this just so you guys see the process. And then I'll explain how the currencies are selected. So if I go right here and let's say, okay, I've got my US dollars price list set up. Now I want to let somebody uh, in the UK, um, you know, buy my buy my prints as well. So I'm going to go to currencies right here and we can either add euros or pounds sterling depending on which currency they're accepting. You just click on it right here and then save it. And then now what we have to do is we have to add products to the price list for that currency. So I'm going to click on that currency right here. And then what I'm going to do is just click add products. Now by default we're seeing all vendors. One of the things that I like to do is I like to say settings, okay, uh, the currency is pound sterlings and let's shipping to the UK right there. Let's set that up so that 
when I go and click this right here now I can choose the labs that offer that inf offer uh, products in that currency and that will ship to that country so uh, in this case I'm just going to choose OVI right here and just add a couple of prints really quick so a uh, couple of prints and then add selected products to the price list and then from there now I've got two different uh, currencies on this price list you can continue to add more currencies if you want obviously the more currencies you add, you add the more people will be able the more different locations people will be able to purchase your products so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna save this price list and then I'm going to show you um, how clients can manually change between currencies uh, when they're in a gallery. But in most cases, the currency that it, that um, that's related to their location should show for them by default as long as you have it added to the price list. Um, so if you're in Canada and I added uh, Canadian dollars to my price list and you're viewing a gallery in Canada, it should automatically show Canadian dollars um, based on your um, IP address. So now let me go to a gallery really quick. So I'm just going to go right here and let's find a gallery that has that price list assigned to it. So let me just scroll down and we'll just do it to this landscape gallery really quick. I'll just go pricing and I think that was my main price list here I'm just gonna add that there and hit save and so now let me preview this now if I was a client and I went to this gallery and I clicked on a photo to purchase and it didn't automatically change for some reason I have seen some weird things some IPs do some weird things um, it didn't automatically change for some reason my internet's being slow. Hold on one second here. And it didn't change over for some reason. What a client could do is they could actually just click right here and say, okay, I want to order in, um, let's see, I want to ship to the UK. And it sw should switch over to the UK price list. I must have clicked something. Hold on one second here. Yeah, I clicked something. So if I switch right here, I should be able to say, okay, uh, let's see. Why is it not switching over? Let's see, units. Maybe I picked the wrong price list. Let me go back and double check that price list really quick. Sometimes I forget what price list I changed. So let me check this out for one second here. Yeah, I think what I did was I picked the wrong price list, and I think I changed my price list settings, too, when I did that. So let me make sure that the products have been added correctly. So there is that right there, and that's in pounds sterling. And then the if I go to add products here, let's change the settings. So let's say this is for UK. And then if I go back here and go back to US dollars, This should be United States. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now if I save this and refresh this here, we should be able just to change the currencies using that little sidebar thing here. So if I go here and refresh this, click on here, and now we should be able to change it to say uh, UK or there should be a currency list right here it's probably not letting me change because of my IP um, there but that's an option you have there as well all right let me get back to my dashboard here really quick and let me see if I've got any last minute questions we've got a couple minutes left guys so if you have any last minute questions um, then please make sure to get those thrown in the chat so I can get those answered. We've only got a few minutes left. I'll try to get to them if I can. But if not, I'm just going to go ahead and grab another email question here really quick. A uh, question from Jane. She says, how can I put an expiration date on a client gallery and will my images be deleted when it expires? Also, can, e can they be notified before it expires? 
Yeah, so Jane, what you're talking about is setting up an expiring gallery, and you can actually do this pretty easy through Zenfolio. So if I go right here to Photos, and I click on a gallery, we can actually set this up to expire. And the cool thing about this is when it expires, the photos aren't deleted from your account. They actually uh, go, um, they actually go to private, and they're still in your account. Your clients just cannot access them. So uh, let's say this is a client gallery right here. Let me just get myself out of the way. Let's say that this Smith gallery right here. Maybe what I told the client was, "Hey, I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to give you a uh, a three month online gallery." And after that, your gallery is going to expire. That's a really good way if you want to kind of put some incentive behind your clients to get their orders in. So what you can do is click on the gallery and then just go over to gallery access on the side right here. And you can say expiration and I'm going to set it up to expire in three months. So um, if it's June 1st, then I'm going to say one, two, three and set it up to expire on September or however long you want that gallery to be available. Now from here, what you can also do is you can also save that and schedule a email reminder that will be sent out to your clients before their gallery expires, just kind of reminding them, hey, your gallery is about to expire. You know, you can set up an email template to basically say, excuse me, basically say whatever it is that you want it to say to your clients and it'll be automatically sent out whenever you want it to be um, there. Now the other cool thing is if we save this, now if a client goes and they view this gallery, so if I go up here and I view this gallery really quick, um, and let me just open this in a new window here. A little pop-up actually comes up here. Let me get myself out of the way so you guys can see it. But it, actually will let them know that the gallery is only going to be available till the 1st of September. Now when the 1st of September comes around what's going to happen is that gallery is going to change from being a password protected or public gallery it's going to change to being a private gallery like these are right here these are private and basically what that means is the gallery is still on your account the images are still there nothing's been deleted um, and then what um, what will happen though is your client won't be able to access it because it's been private. So this is a good opportunity for you to say maybe you know I'm going to give you an, a three month online gallery. Once your gallery expires, you know if if for some reason you need to order photos, you could definitely do that. Um, there'll be a gallery reinstatement fee or something like that, or maybe you offer um, higher prices on your prints and things like that if you have to go in and actually turn that gallery back on for them. So it's definitely another way as well, Andrew, to kind of automate that a little bit using that scheduled email. But it's a good way to give your clients some incentive to place some orders. Um, one thing that I like to do with the, uh, the, the gallery email, the expiring gallery email, is a lot of times what I'll do is I'll throw in just a last minute coupon code in there as well to say, you know, hey, um, your gallery's about to expire use this coupon and get 20% off your prints if you order now. Um, and a lot of times too, for me at least with coupons, I like to make them to where they don't just work, and they only work unless, or they only work if those clients meet an order minimum. So I might throw a coupon in there that says, you know, your gallery is about to expire, you know, order, order now, use this coupon code to get 20% off as long as you spend $150 or something like that. And it's a great way to get the, those last minute sales in um, before you kind of move on to the next client or whatever. So definitely something to take into consideration. All right, guys. Uh, so with that being said, I'm about out of time with questions. But as you guys know, what I try to do is each week I try to give out the tutorial that I'm going to publish to YouTube tomorrow, I tried to give you get to you the well, I can't talk. I try to give it out to those of you guys who come watch the live stream, let you guys have it a day early before everybody else. So I have spent this entire week working on this tutorial. It's a, probably uh, one of the more difficult features in Zenfolio, and it's only going to be available to you if you have a premium business or an advanced account. And it's actually not even that difficult. It's just a little intimidating your first time going at it. But what this tutorial is, is that it's a complete walkthrough of how to set up 
a restricted event. So let me get that tutorial link for you guys and throw that out in the chat really quick. So this uh, tutorial actually took uh, several different videos to put together. Um, and it's all going to be linked right here, but here's that tutorial for the restricted events. It's really great if you're a school photographer, if you're looking for a way to send out a bunch of clients from maybe an event, maybe you shot an event or a school and you need to send them emails with access to just their specific photos. It's a really great way to do that. Uh, and with that being said, guys, thank you for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all the questions. Graham, Andrew, Katrina, thank you guys so much for your participation. Uh, we do this every week, same time, same place. Uh, so until next Thursday, I hope you guys have a great week and a great weekend. And I look forward to hanging out with you guys again next Thursday. The Force will be with you.